Hey kids, you're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that all of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast featuring Dr. London Smith. The number one rated podcast for abstinence-only sex ed teachers. Introducing your host, Dr. London Smith. Hello, and welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health, and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, DrLondonSmith.com. I would like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as asterixis and syrup chips. So I'll try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Dr. London, I am so excited to announce our new project. And no, I'm not talking about your new zit. I know you're proud of it, but that is not what I'm announcing, okay? Because I did work on it. But yeah, I guess that was my project more than ours. Right. That's not a group project. That is your thing, and you can promote it however you want. Dr. London, I am talking about a new show on our streaming service. Okay. Yes. For any listeners who have been who have been listening the last few weeks, you already know this, but we are creating a streaming service to compete with Netflix and Hulu and all that jazz, and we are going to dominate them. Gonna dominate. Dominate. And we have a new show to announce today. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm pretty pumped about it. Dr. London, I mean, you're kind of the mastermind behind this project. You, mm-hmm. you came to me and you said, you know what sucks is Spider-Man and yeah. Batman. And all these like, oh, bugs and flying things and mm-hmm. oh, whatever, man. Well, because I have my own said, collection of critters. And like, well, you did. And you said your favorite one was the crab. And you were like, what happened to crab man? There's no crab man. And so we are filling that void. We have created a brand new television show that we're excited to launch, and we can actually, uh, okay, we haven't filmed it yet, I'm just going to say that yet, but we have the scripts right here, and Dr. Linda, I was hoping maybe you and I could maybe read a scene from it to give our audience sort of a preview of what Crab Man is going to look like. Yeah, yeah, just, and by look like, we do mean sounds like, I think. Yeah, I mean sounds like, I I, I was going to, I have some crayons, I was going to draw like a fun picture as we go um but we don't have to do that yeah we don't have to do that i i I can i can leave my crowning for another time i guess it's just you you did bring so many here i (laughs) yeah and that that's what i'm saying that's what i wanted to do but it sounds like you're pretty anti me coloring i uh okay let's 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 start and if you feel very inspired then you could color i guess okay okay here's here's your script here you go i start here I'm the, I'm, yeah. I got the first yeah. line here. Go ahead. Right? <clears throat> okay. Well, you've done it this time. You've gone way too far. Pinch. Uh, how dare you do- Pinch. I pinched you. Oh, that, uh, that's kind of an annoying. Uh, I gotcha, Pinch. Yeah. I'm Crab Man. Pinch. Yeah, okay. Well, that, you, you've gone too far with this, this pinching business. It's, you got body bags of... Well, I mean, the bodies are... You bagged them, but they're still alive because it's just a pinch. Yeah, I, I just pinched them. Pinch. Yeah, gotcha. okay, really, that really stings. Gotcha, Captain. Yeah. St- and pinch. Okay. <sighs> you want to see me scuttle about? I know you've gone viral for this, that you're really good at scuttling, but it's not helping us. Listen, Captain, I'm a man whose DNA was combined with a crap, Okay. So I've got all the abilities of a man, such as ability to do, to do taxes, ability to drive to the doctor, ability to open mail and also send mail, but also the powers of a crab, such as scuttle, 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 and also pinch. I can't pinch, have you. Gotcha. Grr. Pinch. Gotcha. I can't have you filing taxes in here. I can't have you crabbing about. We're done with this. You're done here, crab man. Don't think so. Pinch. And scene. Wow. Wow. And that's one thing that they, you know, I feel like they get wrong in all these big superhero movies is they have a whole movie about the origin story, but Crab Man just casually, conversationally lays out little seeds so you know 
that he's actually been through all this genetic transformation and you don't have to have a full movie to flesh that out. Yeah, I mean, it's boring to go over, oh, some some a vat of nuclear waste tipped over and mixed with blah, 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 blah. No, we're not messing with any of that. It's just a man who comes up to you and goes, pinch, pinch, gotcha. And yeah, and for any of you listeners who might say, um, probably there is a crab man out there, right? Like someone has come up with this before. That's a fairly common enough animal that someone probably has. Uh, I'd say... I mean... Uh, I'd say, shut up. Yeah, like kill yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't know if I'd say that, but like certainly I'd say maybe calm down for a second and let let Cameron have his moment here. Cause let let's get to production before we worry about licensing is really what right. the point here. Because we can transition this into Lobster Man so fast, so fast. All right, uh, Cameron, so we have our sponsor, Caldera Lab, and uh, we just want to share they're backed by a leading clinical trial where 9 out of 10 men experience healthier and visibly improved skin. And so Caldera Lab has the tools to help your skin improve. Uh, use code JOCKDOC at calderalab.com for 20% off their best products. And Dr. London, these products are so good. I am making Caldera's products part of my presidential campaign. Okay. So, now, I, just to clarify here, they aren't saying that to you. You are saying that to them. Yes, I am saying that I sponsor Caldera Labs, Caldera Labs. and I guarantee without their knowledge, Caldera products for every citizen. If I win, of course, you know I can't guarantee that. If I lose, yeah, yeah. Can you guarantee that if you win, though? That's I really think I can work that deal out. Yeah. Like, and I, I don't mean in terms of like cost wise. I also mean resource. I don't. That I don't know is what a capacity job for the handle. money crunchers to might figure out, Doctor London. I am just here. I'm just a normal guy running for president who has figured out that I can beat the system. You want to know how, Doctor London? Is it with Caldera Lab or? Is- well, it's with Caldera Lab. That's like a selling point. Okay, okay. okay. But the, the real way, so all these guys who are announcing their bid for presidency, they're running in 2024. And I think they maybe made a mistake because it's 2023. And so if I run this year, I'm the only one on the ballot. Mm, okay. They're all like, oh, I need a year to prep. If I can really get my stuff together and, and, and make this work. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. So here's here's the one of the issues I found with it because I've okay. seen you prepping for this. Yes. Um, Cameron, twenty twenty three. Yeah. Not just the banners, but also the voting booths you've been trying to install in various areas because, of course, they only bring out those voting booths and machines for the actual election in twenty twenty four. So you're just setting up your own around town. And so, so a lot of your campaign, right? Because you, know, you said you're going to go around the country campaigning, but your campaign is really mostly going to install voting boxes, ballot yeah. boxes. And I feel I feel like install implies more work. I, I put a box down, which like yeah. If you labeled it, that even that might do a little bit for you. But I feel like and I did. I, I would say the first like ten or fifteen I labeled, then the sharpie ran out, and so then I just sort of put a box. Um, just next to public mailboxes, and I, I figure that'll get the point across. Again, I'm the only run, only one running in 2023. These suckers are all focused on next yeah. year. No, it like that. That is an edge. Uh, I don't. I really feel it like, because people don't even know unless they see you and the ballot box together. I guess then maybe they could connect it as you trying to oh, run oh if they think i'm like dating the ballot box like if they see us in a magazine that's that's interesting that's an angle dr london i is it so anyway uh, caldera lab uh they have the regimen bundle and sorry cameron of course you you th- this is important for your campaign i guess 
Um, they have the mm-hmm. regimen bundle. It's a twice a day routine to transform your skin. You have the clean slate, the base layer, and the good. The clean slate is where you start your day. It's a balancing cleanser that uses gentle plant-based cleansing, leaving all skin types exceptionally refreshed. Uh, then the base layer, it's a nutrient-dense fortifying moisturizer that hydrates your skin and absorbs fast, leaves you with a matte finish so you can start your day confidently. And then the good is your go-to at night before bed, and it's a clinically proven multifunctional serum that helps your skin look tighter and smoother, as well as to help reduce uh, visible wrinkles and fine lines. And I can guarantee if elected, every citizen's skin will look tighter and smoother. And is, Whether we got to do it the Caldera way or the hard way, what, it's going to happen. What, what's the hard way? That involves... Do you mean like hold people down to, to stretch out, to, to smooth out their skin? Skin is a lot stretchier than you think. And so to really make it tight, sometimes if you make an incision around the uh, skull talking, and then just pull it... Are you talking it? about a facelift? Are you talking about... Because that, that's what you're describing, I think, has already been invented and is done pretty common. Yeah, you just pull the skin back, you tie it up behind the head. I feel like you're describing a back alley version of what is actually a normal and thing. And every American citizen can get that or Caldera Labs amazing products. Right, so um, uh, if you want to take your skin to the next level, you can use the Icon which is a rejuvenating eye serum here to address the three most common skin concerns around the eye, which is fine lines, dark circles, and puffiness. Uh, Caldera Lab is also on a mission to make men's skin care better around the world. So uh, they use clean ingredients. They do right by the planet they live in. So they're, cal- they're a certified B corporation as well as a member of the 1% for the planet. Um, they don't test on animals. They, they keep, once again, uh, they, they use clean uh, sourced ingredients. Um, get 20% off with our code JOCKDOC at calderalab.com. That's 20% off at calderalab.com by using code JOCKDOC. Take your skin to the next level with Caldera Lab. And vote for producer Cameron in the 2023 presidential election. Just find a box I, near a mailbox. Find a box, yeah. Do you see a box near a mailbox? Just put your vote in there. Anyway, uh, so that was our producer Cameron. Also with us is Did You Know in the House? We are going to dominate. Dominate. And later, Cameron tells me that we can expect a special guest. Before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. For a long time, our listener demographic was primarily composed of abstinence-only sex ed teachers. 
But in our efforts to cater to them, we found that we were neglecting the many bot accounts that download our podcast. So, Cameron, could you check our TikTok for listener feedback? Absolutely, Dr. London. So, a few weeks ago, we stirred up a bit of controversy when we talked about the moon landing. Yes. Um, All we did, we're just calling it like we see it. All we did was point out that when you watch the video of the moon landing, you can see the wires. And then eventually you can see the puppets, and then you can hear the NASA guys dubbing over the video saying, Hi, I'm Buzz Aldrin. Can I get some moon cheese? Hello? Right, and like people, like I get that, that you know, there's this authenticity, and, and I have to say to myself, well, I've never been to space. I don't, maybe that's what it is like on the moon. Maybe there are puppet people, and there's, Hi, push by some baba moon cheese. But, um... I have some doubts about that just based on my own experiences on this planet. Right. And it's just it's just asking questions. But so we we talked about this in and we posted a TikTok about it. And we've got comments like from Jabron Lames who says, Bro, how do you people exist? Watch a documentary, watch a debate, ask a professor, do something, bruh. Okay. Dr. London, you're all of these things. Yeah. Aren't my feelings about the moon landing accurate? Yeah. They're, Boom! For one thing, their feelings it doesn't matter. Yeah, who gives a shit? But also, boom! I <laughs> yeah. did it. I did the exact th- you thing consulted. that you told us to do, Jabron yeah. Lames. I am a professor. That's a real thing. So, um, okay. Miles says, although everyone can have a podcast, not everyone should have a bad ca- Which, podcast. Okay. This is that's we've had this one a lot. We've had this one multiple times, and you're wrong. Because everyone can have a podcast, everyone should have a podcast. And if you're listening to this and don't have a podcast, again, I hate to say this, but to go back to what we were talking about, I think you should kill yourself. Like, and I hate saying that. And I, I don't. I feel like you don't hate saying that, and I feel like you know a certain there's a certain gravity to that that maybe is is hitting a little hard. So I want to just backtrack a little on that and say, you no, know, don't do that. But uh, it's it's. You're upsetting Cameron. Is that's what what's happening here? Matt Deemer said, "You know, you can take a telescope and look at the landing site?" Question mark. Um, I guess you're asking a question because you did put a question mark at the end of that statement. So I think you're just asking, like, you know, can can you take a telescope and look at the landing site? And I would say no, because all you're going to see is puppets that they left on the moon. Yeah, I re- we should really stress they went to the moon. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. They went to. They just did a little puppet show on the moon, which was beautiful, and it was. It like was awesome, incredibly well but written. The, the the rumor or whatever this cons- this idea that Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong actually stepped on the moon when it was really a puppeteer who then did a fun show. Yeah, that's I, all we're trying to clarify. And I, you know, like maybe this is the maybe this is the part that people are frustrated at. So in the third act of the play, sure. I get that, like. People didn't love the ending because, you know, the moon man ultimately won the, the one moon man. Uh, and he, you know, in the thing, he says, I can asexually reproduce. I can populate the moon again. And, you know, Buzz Aldrin and uh, the other guys, they were like, oh, OK. And a lot of people are frustrated well, at that ending. What I like, well, see, what I liked about the, the ending was it was very funny because, you know, they're focusing on that. But the Buzz Aldrin puppet is still going where can I get more moon cheese? And he's like trying to eat the moon and stuff. I thought that was very funny. Yeah. And, but like, I get that, you know, humor is subjective. So maybe that's, maybe that's what these people have a problem with. So I guess to answer the listener feedback. Yeah. The same thing. I guess that's what you have a problem with. And I screw, screw you. Is that now for today's uh, medical topic, anterior spinal artery infarction. Anterior refers to the front of the body, and infarction is an ob- obstruction to blood supply, like in a heart attack. So, an anterior spinal artery infarction is an obstruction in the frontmost spinal artery, and that normally uh, so that's the penis, right? No. The frontmost artery. Okay. It's the it's the human. It's the it's the human male penis. And this, like, I get, like I said. Our our fans previously were the abstinence only sex ed teachers, and I get that you were really appealing to them with this method of teaching. So, 
a common mistake. The spinal artery is actually in the spine. The yeah, in the oh. back. But this is the front most the penis of the back sort of. Yeah, I arguably. So so you have the spine in the back and this is the frontmost part of still the back. Okay. So um so an anterior spinal artery infarction is an obstruction in that artery, that frontmost spinal artery, which supplies circulation to the anterior or front facing two thirds of the spinal cord, which is once again, still in the back. It's just the, the frontmost part of this back. Um, an anterior spinal artery infarction presents with acute onset, usually with sudden and severe back pain, which may radiate downward. This is associated with uh, weakness, tingling, and numbness on both sides at levels that depend on the specific location of the infarction. Patients. What do you think is the penis of the leg, right? Like the leg has a bunch of bones. Yeah. So what is the penis of the leg I, from a doctor's perspective? Yeah. So I, get, I guess you'd have to get into what, what you define as the purpose of uh, the penis. And it. I mean, it's it's essentially a blood sack, I guess would be one way to look at it. So which part of the leg has the most potential to uh, hold blood? And Yeah. Well, and you can, I mean, I mean, when, if, you t- if you touch it in like, the right way, then it'll like release like a, like a juice. Uh, I, if, I guess like if you cut open part of the leg, then it would release some juice, but it would probably be blood. Okay, that which counts. I guess, yeah. Okay, so like the femoral artery, maybe, because that's a lot of blood goes through that. Oh. Uh, but also, if you're talking about something that people use for sexual things, then maybe the foot. Uh, people use that for stuff sometimes. Oh. So, uh, but it, you know, great question. I'm glad. I'm glad we're finally moving on from the absence only sex ed. Like this is this is a little bit more in depth than most people get from our podcast. So. Anyway, patients with uh, an anterior spinal artery infarction may experience flaccid paralysis below the level of the infarction, along with a lo- uh, loss of deep tendon reflexes at the level of the infarction. These symptoms transition into spastic paraplegia uh, several weeks later. Patients are also likely to experience a loss of pain and temperature sensation and an extensor plantar response uh, on examination. Uh, there's no specific treatment for anterior spinal artery infarction, though. And just, you know... You know, look, we don't agree with abstinence-only sex education. So Dr. Lund and I have have discussed starting a class for the exact opposite of that, which is um, an extremely slut-heavy focused sex education course. So teaching you about sex and then also just like how to put out, how to get laid, how to pick up chicks, how to pick up dudes, all that stuff. We're incredible. We're very anti slut shaming to the point that we are calling it slut. Like we're, we're throwing that label straight on it. We shouldn't shame people for that. Yes. Yeah. We're happily embracing it and we're doing sex ed like it should be done, which is just easy. Uh, all right. Well, um, I hope that clarifies all the questions about both anterior spinal artery infarction and, uh, sex. All right, uh, Cameron, you said that we have a guest today. Is that right? That's right, Dr. London. Oh, uh, hello there. My name is Dr. London Smith.com, and this is our producer, Cameron. What was your name? Ernie. Uh, is that Ernie? Tarney. Carney? Like a carnival? Tarney. Worker? No, Tarney. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Cameron's got it. Yeah. Thanks so much for bringing me on. Glad to be here. Yeah, welcome to the show, Mr. Uh, Tarney. Tarney. Tarney, yeah. My parents are Australian, but not me. Yeah, you say your parents are Australian, but you still pronounce it the way you pronounce it is, is kind of the vibe yeah. I'm getting. Um, yeah, it's a cultural thing, yeah. Yeah. And so which, your parents were Australian. Are, where were you, where are you from? Uh, middle of the sea. I was born... Mm-hmm. So in transit between continents? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pacific Ocean. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, where, where were you, I mean, primarily raised? The Pacific Ocean. Oh, okay. That was also boat. Yeah. Boat focused. Okay. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Was it boat or plane? Submarine? Raft. Raft. Okay. Uh, oh, so you wow. Grew up in... 
Okay, so you grew up in a rafting culture. My parents were big fans of the water world, so we kind of took the water world lifestyle. Oh. Yeah, so... Have you seen the movie? I'm trying to... I, I don't remember a lot of specifics, so I'm thinking I maybe saw clips of it. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm most well, uh, of my... Dr. London, I saw the movie, okay. and I was about seven years old, and it was on TV, and I remember I was eating graham crackers. And I was also, I made cinnamon toast, which is you take a like piece of white bread, put some butter on it, and then you put some cinnamon on it, and you, 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 you toast it up. You put it in a toaster oven or something like that. That is what I remember about this movie. Torney, is, is your upbringing, I mean, was it entirely Waterworld based? Was it also maybe Life of Pi based? Did you have a tiger involved? No. No tiger? No tiger. Damn. We did have um, fish. Yeah. Okay. I. You know what? I was gonna guess fish would be involved here. Like I haven't. Once mm-hmm. again, I haven't seen Waterworld, uh, so I don't know about the cinnamon toast aspect. But mm-hmm. uh, so this is where our cultures actually align from the the coastal regions and the middle of ocean regions. We also had fish. Now were yours alive when you caught them? Yeah. Okay. So that's very different than your. You Once, caught, yeah. you caught dead fish. Yeah, they were super easy to catch. Yeah, well, that's, someone that's handed, we like handed you a like a grocery bag, and you're like, "Oh, I caught these fish." Yeah, mm. you know a lot about his life. You guys must be really good friends. Uh, documentarian. I mean, well, he's a documentarian. Yeah. Hey, documentarian. Documentarian slash. Mm. I was gonna say mortal enemy. Like I. Of course, no one knows more about their enemy than their fellow enemy. You know what I mean? What brings you here today? Torn, 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 torn. Well, I, uh, I heard about you. I got a lot. I look with looking on the on the web. Saw a lot of good reviews for you that you would be able to help me out. So I've recently been getting into um, how do you call it? Maybe uh, maybe you know the medical term uh, uh, organ dealing. Yeah. I'm mean, dealing with organs, yeah. But a lot of them have been getting spoiled. So I'm trying to find a way to, you like know... in transit? In transit. Uh, sometimes I leave the body out in room temperature for too long. Uh, I only did one class for the, um, like, the food health, the food service stuff. So it's like, okay, don't let it get above 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Um but the bodies just keep spoiling. They just like the I I get one organ out and then the other ones just go to waste. So yeah, just trying so, to yeah. I mean, so I do consult for this stuff. Uh, people often come to me. So one of the things that I tell you know people who are kind of new to the business, um, go ahead and invest in either an ice maker, an ice machine, or a fridge of some kind because uh, as you said, you know the bodies do stay warm and if you don't keep them cooler or even frozen then that's hard yeah, yeah and, mm-hmm. and like it's it's one of these things where like you kind of it, it sucks but you have to pay to play kind of thing like you have to invest the money uh in these parts because you know the body the, the the blood wants to be flowing or you have to once again put it on ice freeze it whatever but common problem and so the first thing i would say is like get find a way to cool it down Th- those are the ways that i know um, and that I've, you know, done whenever I'm okay. Now, now let's say that, you know, you're taking a voyage, uh, because I'm transporting organs from the United States, let's say to Australia, you know, and, uh, but I'm, I'm going by raft, you know, so I don't have electricity. Uh, I, uh, I've tried the ice method. It melts pretty fast. I want to know about these organs. Who are you? I mean, dealing with to specifically like is this like a mob related thing or are you you're just an independent contractor i'm an independent contractor uh i uh find my own i find and source my own uh organs organically okay. uh my yeah all my uh clients you know i don't discriminate uh it goes from cannibals uh to um <clears throat> uh eccentric billionaires looking for a new organ to you know just you know, people just want to have a little fun. Locally sourced, organic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about the people on the other side? Like the, how do I put this? The people giving their organs. Is that all? How, how, how do you come into, how, 
how do I put this? How do you come to have those organs that you are able to deal? That's a great question. And I think you know the answer to that. All right. So let's say it on three. I think we all know. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Murder. Animatronic uh, organs. Ask them for the organ politely, and then they hand it over. Close. Chuck E. Cheese was close. Okay. Okay. I murder people. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of those. I ethically, I feel a little torn here. Hmm. Because of the because of Doctor London, can can I talk to Doctor London for a second? Why have we had so many murderers on this podcast? I don't know. It's once again like it's. I feel like the average person hasn't met that many murderers, and yet I feel like we've met. I mean, actually, the the average person. Um, sorry, interrupt. Uh, the average person walks by thirty five zero killers in their lifetime. Oh. So, maybe. well, in that case, I think we're under that amount. So, okay, we're good. Yeah, technically, we're good. Well, and I like it could be because we don't walk enough. Like we haven't been getting cardio in the way we should. Oh. Right. Yeah, I haven't been getting in my 100 steps a day lately. You guys, you guys are safe. Then you, uh, you wouldn't make uh, good organ donors. Thank you. You know, organ. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't, you don't get the cardio. I look for the fittest. I um frequent a lot of uh, P90X places, CrossFit. You know, really getting the the top notch people. The kind of people who have dislocated their shoulder because they're doing just insane exercises that don't make sense. mm Hmm. And that way that they won't be able to fight me that, you know, so then I'm able to take them on. Like, oh, yeah. oh, I really, my, my rotator cuff. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh boy, okay. Try to punch me with that. Torney, I'm, I'm, so I'm here, I'm wondering. Torney. 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 Torney, yeah. Torney. You're, you're working yeah. with, it sounds like kind of some shady people. Like you're a murderer. You're also working with cannibals. I mean. Do you consider yourself a shady person, or do you? Is this? Do you think this is all above board? Or um, what's your main profession? What do yeah. you do? My main mm. profession? I fix animatronics at Chuck, Chuck E. Cheese. And those um, animatronics are without sin. I mean, no. Are they without sin? No, of course not, because they impregnated my mother slash father out of wedlock. So, no, of course not. Mm-hmm. And because you work with them, do you consider yourself a sinful person? Oh, I consider myself a sinful person for many reasons beyond anything to do with the animatronics. Well, I don't. I'll be honest with you, I don't. I don't consider myself unethical or shady. Uh, I consider myself a, a business person with just a goal in mind to uh, provide a service that people want. Yeah, but you're murdering people. I mean, that's a little iffy, right? I mean, look, Dr. Lund and I, have we murdered people for this podcast? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you got to sometimes. We don't make a regular thing out of it. We're not making money off of it. This podcast makes no money. Mm-hmm. So I You mean, should think about monetizing. Oh, no, no. You think I about monetizing. Never oh, think and we don't want to sell out. No, we, yeah, it's just, this is I'm art. Really so, uh, mm-hmm. This, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. medical education podcast is art. Okay. I'll tell Banksy that. I'll tell Banksy, who is an artist who makes millions of dollars off his art, that he yeah. should stop making money. Well, I know I, Banksy. I, say, I took one I of his kidneys. That, that actually. total sellout, Banksy. Yeah, the mm-hmm. we're. I I'm just. I mean, we should probably just tell him, right, Doctor London. We're not talking to Banksy right now, because <laughs> the last time we got together, he was like, "Oh, my millions of dollars! Like, oh, I did my little painting on the side of a wall, and someone paid me a bunch of money for it." And we were like, "Banksy, get out of here, Banksy, Banksy!" Was- yeah, so we're not talking anymore because of that reason. Uh, anyway, I feel like it's time for chores. Oh no, Doctor London. Let me explain what the hell you're even talking about. Me and Dr. London have been neglecting everything on our to-do list for quite a while now, and so we built out this chore wheel that we spin every single week, and whatever it lands on, that is the chore we have to do. Now, uh, Mr. Tur- Turning, tor- Turning. Turning, would you uh, spin the wheel that is behind you? Just You see that big wheel behind you? You can just go ahead and... Uh... Mm-hmm. The chore wheel, unfortunately, I hate this. I hate we have to do this, but it landed on read our Twitter drafts. I, I'm so embarrassed to have to do this because my drafts are for me. You know what I mean? Those are the things I've, I haven't workshopped yet. 
But Dr. Lennon, can we hear a couple of your of your Twitter drafts real quick? Sorry, I'm pulling it up now. Um, okay. Coming up on a recession. It's my hairline. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you keep that in the drafts. You shouldn't post that. Yeah. That's a little too. If you want, if you want a new organ for your head so i got some a couple of people with good heads of hair if you want to transplant tony uh how about you any any good drafts um yeah let's see uh check in on your friends make sure they came at least once today a little bit about mental health i'm a big advocate for i'm a big, big advocate for mental health yeah wow big advocate are y'all working on your mental health yeah, I mean, once a day, like you said. I I haven't been. Oh, you don't want to get backed up. You really need to take care of that. Yeah. Cameron? Yeah, my tweet draft says, Judd Apatow, Opine Studios, already have an end date in mind for Strike. As the Writers Union Strike gears up for its second week, Judd Apatow has some theories about how and when a deal might play out. Um, How many characters did that? Uh, I believe it is, I don't know, I mean, like 20, 30. But that was really good for mental health as well. Mm-hmm. Well, Cameron paid up for the, the extra typing space. Mm. The yes. Extra characters. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm paying for Twitter blue because, well, and also, like, you, you, I don't think you're allowed to tweet the words Judd Apatow without paying for blue. Anyway, uh, I think we did it. Wow, we, re- we really did the chore. Um. Let's see, uh, Trony, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to shout out? Anyone you'd like to shout out, promote? Um, I know you've been limited in, you know, hearing or seeing anyone, but is there anyone? Yeah, don't worry. I got uh, a million uh, Twitter followers. Uh, yeah. You could tweet about this by the, if you wanted, by the way, if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will. Okay. He, he really thank you so- the amount of looking to either side he just did thank you avoiding looking nah okay well we'll see uh well if this uh gets out there and you're looking for an organ to sell or just give one up or a mortal enemy who's uh hit me up uh on uh all socials uh if you're looking to go pay respects to someone i stole a bunch of uh organs from hit up at paul Aredia on instagram uh check out what he's doing okay uh well uh thank you to uh our guest Bernie. Bernie here. Bernie. yeah and uh thank you to our producer cameron thank you to digital the house